Is it a car? Is it a plane? Well, it's both. Flying cars have been an interesting topic since both cars and planes have been invented. Today, I will talk about one that was close to production, the Terrafugia Transition. First flown in 2009. The Terrafugia Transition was interesting for a couple of reasons. See, the older car flying concepts often relied on detachable wings. That's pretty cool, but the Terrafugia went with a more integrated design utilizing folding wings. That design made transitioning from a car to a plane easier and quicker. In fact, it can transition in 30 seconds from roll to flight. The transition was a fully functional plane and a car at the same time. On the road, it could do 110 km an hour or 68 miles an hour. You might say, oh, that's way slower than normal cars, and people in normal cars will overtake you. But do you know what they can do? Well, they certainly can go to the nearest airstrip and fly away. In flight, it can reach 107 miles an hour or 172 kilometers an hour in normal cruise. The max flight speed is 150 miles an hour or 185 kilometers an hour. So, as an aircraft, it falls into light sport plane category. The general idea is like this. Imagine you want to go from one town to another one, and those two towns are 500 kilometers or 310 miles apart. The plane is the fastest option, but planes can't exactly go in cities, so you need to find an another type of transportation. The Terrafugia transition solves this. You go to the nearest airstrip and take off. After that, you fly to that city and land at that airport. After that, you can drive off from that airport and go to your favorite strip cl I mean library club. It makes sense, right? One very interesting thing about flying cars is how complex are they design-wise. It's enough to design a car and make it safe, but on top of that, you have the plane aspect too, and combining those two is a big engineering feat. One example of that is few rules that needed to be exempted. The light sport rule stated that the aircraft can be heavier than 600 kilograms or 1300 pounds. The transition weighed at 860 kilograms or 1800 pounds, far exceeding the LSA rule. That extra weight was added because of additional structures needed for road safety and for federal motor vehicle safety standard approval. Considering that it's a very specific vehicle, the FAAA allowed the extra weight and it can retain light sport aircraft type. Another exemption they made is stall speed. Because the transition required very specific design to accommodate both road ability and flying, the design choices made the stall speed higher than a normal light sport plane. The stall speed rule for LSA is 86 km an hour or 53 miles an hour, while the transition stall speed was 100 km an hour or 60 miles an hour. The FAAA exempted that rule too. It also has ballistic parachute that probably helped with those exemptions. The parachute is there so you can save yourself if everything goes south. Many LSA and non-LSA aircrafts have it. It also needed some exemptions for road. The Terrafugia wanted to use polycarbonate windshield and side windows instead of glass. They also wanted different airbags, motorcycle tires instead of RV tires, and it also lacked stability control. NHTSA granted all of the request exemptions on June 2011, but limited the stability control and airbag exemptions to one year. By the way, they built two prototypes, one with different front and one production model. The interior was also very interesting. It had a normal steering wheel for road use, and in between the legs of the pilot it had one big stick. I mean stick for control and not different type of stick. On the floor it had brake, gas and radar pedals. The gas control is pretty interesting. For road use it uses normal gas pedal that comes up when released. But for flight it uses another gas lever that remains in position. That you set. It also had many different gauges for flight and road use. In terms of power plant it uses 100 horsepower Rotax engine for both flight and road with CVT transmission for road use. Let's talk about its dimensions. The transition is kinda big. It's 5.7 meters or 18.7 feet long. 
basically like a full-size one wheelbase van. It's also 2.3 meters or 7 feet 6 inches wide. You might ask what happened, why we don't see it? They kept testing it over years and planned production few times, but sadly they couldn't launch it. The last post on their Instagram was in 2019. Good news is that the Geely company bought them. Who knows, maybe they will have interest in reviving this concept. That's all, thank you for watching.